okay so uh, we will be talking about uh, web app and testing today and uh, uh, about me i am part of uh, uh, Bang owasp bangalore chapter i'm one of the chapter leaders for owasp and uh, also i am part of women in appsec through which uh, we have got to know about the cyber talent cdf and uh, uh, the cdf with the, the university uh, now this session will mainly concentrate on uh, defining the sdlc and the pen test uh, strategy that's about me you can reach me on um, uh, Twitter handle anytime you can reach me on LinkedIn if you have any doubts any question feel free to reach back to me I am also leading one of the community for girls that's called InfoSec girls now uh, as I mentioned the goals that we would be discussing about the architecture of applications uh, then now when you're building an application and it's gonna be on internet you, any application or anything that is on internet is not safe in is not 100 percent safe so you have to make sure at least you have some uh, uh, awareness on how you can uh, write an application uh, code safely and uh, how you can make sure that the hackers are not able to hack your application you can't control 100 percent but at least you can uh, you can secure 99 percent <laughs> Uh, I can hear some noises from the background. Okay, so uh, talking about the architecture, uh, that any information security that we start off with, it always consists of uh, uh, three pillars, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality is when you, uh, that you, uh, you will be uh, making accessible some data to only the people who require access to it. It should not be accessible to everyone. Example, uh, right now you are in university and uh, there are exam papers of different subjects. So the papers would only be accessible to teachers. And that too, when we talk about granular access, that will be only accessible to the particular teacher, not to the students till the time the exam day is there. So you'll be given the papers and then you write exams. That's, con uh, that's called confidentiality. Now, availability. When you require internet access in um, your college or you require access to certain mails, that is available to you when you require that. Integrity. So, integrity is basically deals with the information that you're trying to convey to someone that reaches in its true form without any tempering. There is no tempering in the middle. There's no man in the middle who's just uh, modifying the information and sending it to somewhere. Or uh, when we say that uh, the data is getting saved to the database, it's not being modified by anyone. So it's being the same way that has been supposed to be there. So we have to make sure that anything that we do uh, on the internet, it consists of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, uh, in this picture, uh, this is basically the diversity. It shows diversity. When we are working on any project, any topic in the organization, a diverse organization is when you have diversity. It can be di gender diversity, it can be age diversity, it can be color diversity. So when you have a diversity, that gives different viewpoints. Everyone has their own experiences. They come up with their different ideas. When you have uh, this kind of environment that flourish more which we have seen in the past so same goes with application security that when you have different skill sets development skills get um, you have network skill set or you and you have a good understanding of database that brings out the best in you that you can get started more so now when you're starting in college you you understand how to write an application you have to, uh, what languages are there and uh, uh, what are the databases, what are the networks, all those things are there in the books. But then when you start working on that, then you relate about it more. This architecture shows it that when you are opening, uh, let's say, OWASP.org or Cyber Talents, so that's not the only page that you're looking forward to. It has a whole architecture uh, at the back end. It has a network layer, it has an app server, web server, database, 
a uh, lot of systems are there in the background so all of the components are there but you can see only the cyber talents page or the cdf page or oasp or org page but how you relate to it so uh, or, or how you can secure them now every layer um, the information that travels from your system to the to the uh, cyber talent server that goes to the whole procedure the whole seven layers or the osi model that we've been hearing about uh, or we've been reading about the seven layers is it travel through from the application layer to the physical layer and then the reverse back so you you make a request to a cyber talents page and then it opens up because you are connected to the internet but yeah, when we say network layer it goes to the server server uh, it goes to the router router check whether the dns is available or not domain name server is available or not if it's there then it connects to the it sends the request to the domain name server comes back saying yes i am available and it sends you back saying hi so it's a whole, um, it's the whole process it's the whole journey that it travels through in the middle there are uh, there are uh, uh, the servers that are there firewalls are there and in every layer the security is there now most of the organizations have started uh, have actually uh, set in, uh, have actually set up the soc environment which is security operation center wherein uh, uh, they have uh, ids ips which is intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems they also have uh, 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 they also have uh, the firewalls in place uh, uh, and uh, sim which is security information and even management to make sure that they gather all the alerts because you need to make sure that if somebody is trying to hack your application they are getting the alerts you are actually monitoring the alerts so it's it, it has become one of the most important section for oas.10 as well or your pen testing as well so now you're trying pen testing but if you are able to pen test any site that you are required to even though ethically um, when you are uh, asked to pen test an application if there are no alerts uh, then how would you detect it if you yourself can't detect the alerts which are happening on your site which you're trying to stimulate then if a hacker is trying to put some malicious content on your site you wouldn't be able to detect it till the time your site goes down or something happens to your site uh now i will pause for a few seconds till that i uh, i would just go back and see that if uh, the people who are there in the other channel can join this channel we resume it uh, moving on to the next topic this is the secure, uh, software development life cycle uh, this i've taken uh, from microsoft microsoft um, came up uh, uh, with the security as uh, security sdlc cycle or i would say they came up with the software development life cycle and then we embedded security to it and now every company has uh, this software development life cycle alongside security that's called secure sdlc and we will you will when you move out of your college you will also hear the terminology is called agile um, agile methodology or sprints i will be talking about it once i cover the sdlc what sdlc is all about uh, when you are developing an application or a website um, uh, then that time you need to have a proper plan for it you need to go phase by phase because uh, that the application which is going on the internet that has multiple phases you start with the requirements let's say sara says that i want uh, to create an application which is sara.com or mona says that i want mona.com or uh, mona.co.org now when we want to create those sites it's a, it's just that we are talking right now we are just trying to understand what our requirements is we both are try, uh, trying to ask questions so let's say i am a uh, i am a developer or i am a person who's going to help you in developing an application so i will ask these questions like what exactly you look for in sara.com or shekha.com or any site that you're trying to develop let's say you say that i want the challenges to be listed on the site the way cyber talents has it and uh, you also want Uh, certain sections to be embedded to it where all the users can register all the users can uh, can log in now when you say you have a login page you write it down in a piece of paper or you write it down on a document that's called design documentation the uh, uh, 
now the requirements phase basically we gather the requirements and when we pen down all those requirements on a paper or uh, in a word document that's called the designing of uh, uh, the architecture and once that's done it goes to the implementation phase it actually uh, goes to the developers telling them this is what you have to do they define the languages they work with the team they work with the uh, the client they work with uh, sara or or i let's say i'm a developer i will work with you and understand whether the language would be um, java php dot net so all that goes into the implementation phase i would write a code now once my code is written that's uh, that's called the development phase or implementation phase it goes to verification there is an environment that's being set up to test those applications test the code whether when i push it to the production or on the internet how will it look like whether the thing that i wanted is it the same or not is it the same site that i wanted to have uh, so that that's when you do the verification and once the verification is done you push the site to production but every phase if you don't integrate security there will be a lot of challenges we've been hearing about a lot of major uh, hacks that have been happened and there are there's one big hack that uh, um, that has happened recently which i heard yesterday only that's a big hack on one of the hotel sites the, the hackers were there from quite long so you have to make sure that the, i'm sorry yes we have heard about it yeah so in every phase in the requirements phase when you have the uh, the requirements gathering that time you should do risk assessment risk assessment is a big thing where you have to understand that how what all things would be there in your application and how would you categorize them whether it will be a, a critical uh, application high high application low be low severity application uh, but how would you do that you do that based on the kind of data that your application handles if something happens to the application if an hack happens or if it goes down what would be the uh, impact of it so based on that you do the risk assessment you can do it using your own uh, knowledge or uh, the uh, the checklist that you have created or the pointers that you have created for risk assessment you do it then in the design phase uh, what i do is i always read through the whole document and come up with certain pointers that yes this is all should be there in the design document before going to the developer i always look for a security section i don't have the dummy design documents rather i would have showed you it's a whole good document stating every pointer this should be there in the application even the languages that will be used even the sections that will be created now in the implementation we do the secure code review which is very important when you can fix the security in the first phases itself why don't you why would you fix in the later phase because fixing a bug in the development phase or in the design phase will cost you very very minimal because you can re revamp the design or you can uh, code uh, if there are things that are not safe in the code let's say if you are taking some parameters and they those are those are not validating the inputs you would make sure that those are validating inputs then only you will send it to the uh, functional testing team or the test the team which is actually testing the application now uh, the secure code review is done in the verification phase you actually test you do the pen testing you actually do all the test that you can think of from a hacker's point of view or a hacker's mindset and try and do the verification once the site goes to the internet or goes to the production that's what we call it as as a production site or a internet internet facing site you do the actual pen testing you do the security testing and see what all things i can find out now all this is done all this is you're trying to do but as i said that when there is an application which is on the internet it's not 100% safe you you have to make sure that you have a concrete incident response plan with you if you don't have a concrete incident response plan and you don't know what to do when something happens to your site then you are in trouble so have an a proper incident response plan okay that now moving on to the next slide let me move this to the bottom here okay 
Now, this is what I was talking about, about uh, what all things, what all principles you should follow when you, ha- when you are working on a secure design. What all things you should make sure that you have in mind. This is uh, working with the team. What all uh, checklists you can follow. It's not always go- good to follow checklist. I just take them as a benchmark, but I use my own knowledge i take inputs from other people also when i do the design reviews because checklist is there to just set the benchmark now same goes with secure coding secure coding actually helps you when you are you are a security researcher you're doing the code review it's all good but the code can be better when you are actually interacting with the developer you're giving them the training the actual training that yes you should write a good code. It will ease your efforts. And as you are in college, you might be getting certain assignments also to write the uh, code or to give to create an application. So if you're writing a good code, then your application would be amazing. It will give you a sense of security. Yes, that my application, I have written a good secure code. And my when my application goes to internet, this will actually avoid certain sets of uh, malicious actors. Who are trying to hack my application so good uh, and if you're working and you are a part of security team then you should have a good reputation with the uh, developer you should make them understand that security is a requirement it should be there because if you have um okay you have a good house you have bought a good very good house but if it doesn't have a door then anyone can come and take the things out anyone can mm, modify things in your house so you should have a gate now you have a gate but if it doesn't have a lock then how would you if you want to go out uh, freely with a free mind how would you do that you need to have a good lock system now we've been talking about iot so you can control certain things from the uh, internet how would you do it you have certain technology in place now these are some some guidelines that uh, that are there the security bugs, subset of implementation bugs, all those things uh, which I explained that we have to make sure that we do proper static analysis before uh, doing the dynamic analysis. It will help you, it will give you a sense of security that your application is amazing. At least it's 90% safe if not 100%. It's 95% safe if not 100% because nothing on the internet is 100% safe. Now, these are some reference points which you can go through. Uh, OWASP has a secure coding guidelines uh, wherein you can go back and see what are uh, uh, the checklists that you can do or what are the points that you should consider when you're doing a code review. So I will just show you something here. Um, okay, here. Now, uh, this is the proactive controls. I'll show you the code review guideline. So this is the OWASP poor review guide, which will help you. And there are amazing content over the internet from different resources. I can share all the resources that I follow. There are amazing trainings for code review to give you uh, an understanding that how to write a code securely. You are writing and the boom in the market is that people have to, people should have a good knowledge of code review. That will give you, uh, because when you are doing a, um, a pen testing or even when you are working on a CTF, you might look back at the code also. You might try and see the view source saying that how it, the, the functionality is built. So this is the guide that you can refer to. And then these are the standards when we do the design review. I always look for the application security verification standard. I create my own pointers that, that which I always look for. Okay, now moving on to the actual pen testing, what we do. When we talk about um, the web application, web application, actually, when you see uh, an actual internet site, there is a huge communication that is happening. But how that happens? How when you op- when you type uh, google.com on your browser, how does it open? When you open cybertalents.com, how does it open? When you open ovas.org, how does it open? There's a communication channel there. There is a client and server channel you are a client your browser is a client which is requested to which is actually requesting to open the 
oasp.org or cybertalents.com page to open and you want to see what's in there. So you are requesting and server is sending the request. Uh, server is sending actually the response from their side saying that, yes, I am available. I'm available for a communication. And then the communications channel uh, initiates. If it's on HTTP, which is hypertext transfer protocol, which runs on port 80, then there will be a connectionless um, or you can say a stateless kind of conversation. The, you will say a hi and then there will be a hi from there and the connection would not be secure. So to make the connection secure, the data cannot be heard by somebody else or the communication. Let's say I and Mona are talking or I and Marwa are talking. Whatever I say, it should only reach to Marwa and nobody else. It should not be heard by anybody else. That's why we have a secure channel in place that's called HTTPS. Now, what I have seen in the past uh, couple of months that the, the, the browsers have started stating if any application is on HTTP, that will be mentioned as insecure or not secure. And all the sites on HTTPS will say connection secure. But how would you check it? I will open my browser and show it to you that how you can check it. Mm, okay, let's see. Let me open um example.com now uh, okay this is example example example.com okay here we go oh again i opened the wrong one like this example.com okay now if you see it's on http i'll open it in chrome my Chrome browser. Now, this example.com is on HTTP, so it says not secure. But if I open Cyber Talents, it will open altogether on HTTPS. And if you see here, the certificate is valid. The, you can see the site settings and the connection is secure. And you can see this lock sign says that it's a secure channel and it has a SSL certificate. You also can look and see whether the certificate is valid or not, whether it's from a proper CE authority or not, or it's a self-signed certificate. Self-signed certificates, you create your own certificate and load it to the site, which are easily to which are very easy to bypass. So um uh, I, I have given an example. Imagine you're actually having a conversation at a bar. Anyone can hear it because you are openly talking to somebody. Anyone who's there would be able to hear it. Now, this is how the HTTP conversation looks like. I would be showing you um, Burp Suite, which is I'm going to be using as a, a proxy. You would see that how the communication looks like if you have not seen it. So here, the, your browser is your client and web, web app is your server. There are actually, uh, that's the front end, but there are servers in the background, which will be app server, web server, or a, the databases. Now, you're trying to open the, the ovas.org page. This is the, uh, the sub pages, which you're trying to access. You're making a request and the server says, yes, I am available. And this is the responses that you get. 200 okay yes i'm available to have a chat and this is how the request and response looks like that you are trying to request and the server is sending a response now this is the architecture web application architecture that there are certain things that you have to understand what exactly runs on the client side and what runs on the server side so um the html if you see that the page is on html it's on your client side that's what being loaded on the client side uh, when we talk about JavaScript, JavaScript runs on the client side. That's when you have the cross-site scripting impacting the clients. VBScript, Ajax, JSON, HTML5, file, file, all those things run on the client side. Even the extensions that we've been hearing about that they are creating issues at the client side, but they run on the client side. They help you load the application. That's what makes the client side application. Now, other things when we talk about the database 
the languages, all those things reside on the server. So all those are server side functionality. Java, .NET, uh, Node.js, SQL Server, XML, web services, all those are server side functionality. You, they, you can call them from the server end. Any web services called, you try and make it from the back end. This is the way you make a request and the response comes. Now, this is the browser. This is the server. How would you see that what's happening in the middle? How do you see where exactly the response is coming from and how I'm sending the request? So if you see here, this is the proxy that is intercepting the request and that's sending the request to the server. Now, the first thing that I always start off with is input-based validation. Now, this is going to be the section wherein we would be doing some hands-on, wherein we will, I will be showing you some, certain demos. But before that, I want you to say, uh, I want to have a discussion with you and I want to hear from you that, uh, uh, that are you able to uh, relate to all the things that I've said? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. So now moving on to the input input based validation uh, vulnerabilities. So whenever I do a code review or uh, I do a pen testing, I always look for the input valid, uh, based val vulnerabilities. Wherein uh, there are multiple input based vulnerabilities which are there. So I will start off with the injection, which is A one of the last part ten. Injection, so injection can can just not only be the SQL injection, but it can be uh, uh, a command injection. It can be um, OS based uh, OS based OS injection, OS command injection, or LDAP injection. Anything that you're trying to inject at the back end. Now, uh, when an application takes input from the users. And without validating, without validating, process it and send it to the database or to the back end and give you the desired results which you want. There you have input-based validate input-based vulnerability. So uh, this is the example that uh, I really like, wherein um, uh, I'm a mother. So I want to look at my son's uh, uh, some information from my uh, son's school. I try and access application. Uh, can I just hold on for a minute? Just hold on for a minute. Uh, here, uh, I am trying to go go to my son's uh, uh, and uh, son's school website and wanted to see the results. Uh, the results is all out, but I couldn't find. It seemed to find some information. I tried putting in the uh, the ID, uh, but still couldn't find it now i am a security person i am a developer and i know how the sql query works i i was able to find some error and see that it's a sql database let me run some queries i ran some queries but still couldn't find it so what i did is um, might be because of certain table contents uh, uh, it's happening that i'm not able to access or the details are not visible to me so what i do, do is I actually create a query and drop all the tables. So this is a query I create and I create, uh, I delete the tables. Now, we have lost the whole records of the students. The whole database is deleted because the school site, first of all, did not handle the errors properly. Another thing is they did not validate what input I gave and the whole results is out whole results is removed from the site now what I'm gonna do what school is gonna do it's a big thing nobody would be able to see the results what's happening and it'll be a big problem for other students so what you should do is you should carefully look at the application as a pen tester i would say create a whole big cheat sheet for yourself and test the application because that's what you're supposed to do that's what we're being paid for it that's what we do 
but if only you are allowed to do it that's called an ethical pen testing when you're allowed to do it and if you still want to try your hands on you're very good with the 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 vulnerabilities you understand the environment well then there are bug bounty platforms that let you do all the things and they pay you for it i've seen women getting amazingly paid for it and not just women everybody getting amazingly paid for it buck crowd is there hacker one is there cobalt is there many platforms that actually connect you to the uh, to the application owners and then they will pay you amount you are ethically reporting a bug a finding a security finding so for input based vulnerabilities you make sure that you are actually uh, you have certain proactive controls in place certain recommendations that the input should be validated properly for injection you have to make sure that, that you create parameterized queries and sanitize the input properly that can start with the coding itself and if you want to pen test certain application and you want to see that how can i create my own cheat sheet i have like 1000 plus um, my, my cheat sheet contains 1000 plus attack vectors so i'll cheat i'll show you how you can create your own here you have cheat sheet cheat sheet for sql injection so it's just the beginning that you have to do certain work but in the later stages it will help you a lot you keep on appending your checklist and you ch actually you cheat sheet and you can share it with the rest of the world i have not created myself the whole cheat sheet but i've taken help from all the amazing researchers who are posting their cheat sheets on the internet and i just append to mine and create mine and whenever i get a chance i just uh, share it with few people it can help you, help them also and if they get a chance to update they share it with me back so cheat sheet for sql injection so here if you see there is from net sparker pentest monkey veraco wood exploit db then you have it from owasp it's a big cheat sheet for sql injection it's not just for sql injection but for other vulnerabilities you have amazing list of uh, uh, cheat sheets or the attack vectors that we call them as now when you're going for a cdf you have to you will get certain challenges based off different scenarios so uh, you should always make yourself prepare that where can i look for this particular challenge as as in you want to try sql injection can you can you create your sql queries or there are queries available on the internet which i can try so you can do that take a help from the your or best is if your internet is not available always have your cheat sheet ready so you can look for it not all the attack vectors would be relevant for you but yes some might be helpful some way now this is how it works most modern applications actually actually they are dynamic applications i have created one of my application which is infosec girls that's a static site because i didn't want to mess with anything i wanted to make sure that my site is secure so we move to a si static site but most applications are dynamic they take input from the users so those are vulnerable to all the attacks that are there in the market if it's a input field it will take input from the users so how it works is the attacker will actually send the malicious input to the web application which will be sent to the database and database will say this is the information you were looking for let's say you were looking for number of users here it is if the credit card numbers are there on the on the database you might not know that you might get the credit card numbers also or the social security number or any confidential confidential information which should not be visible to you which should not be available to you but still it's being available for you because the input is not being validated now moving on to cross site scripting cross site scripting is again an input based vulnerability wherein the application takes input from the user handles it and reflects back the information that user wanted so this is the client side vulnerability wherein the javascript or the script runs on the client side the basic example i'll give you um uh, we read lot of blogs now 
my web uh, no, the, the blog is vulnerable to i know that blog is vulnerable to cross site scripting a third party script can be injected to it and which can impact other users i give uh, in the comment section on the blogs you have comment section in the comment section i give a url which is vulnerable which will actually redirect you to a third party site which will download malware on your system or on the user system users have a tend to read certain comments which are very interesting on the blogs and the blog is vulnerable to cross site scripting when a user so the malicious user has posted certain comments with the vulnerable site or the vulnerable url user clicks on it all the users click on it which have which which show interest on that particular comment let's say 100 now all the 100 will get the malware on their system which is a big thing all the users are getting impacting because my site is vulnerable to cross site scripting so you make sure that when you are taking inputs from the users you always make sure you validate it and then when you're printing it back your output encoding for third party uh, scripts are always validated so your output and output validation and input validation both should be there this is how it goes here this is the vulnerable server which victim is trying to communicate to because i am trying to communicate to uh, xyz site or cyber talent site the response is fine now from this web vulnerable web server i actually got redirected to the attacker web server which might download certain content which should not be there lot of ad awares which are creating lot of issues because of that now if you can actually fuzz so fuzz the application and see whether the input base findings are there or not that's called fuzzing you create your own check uh, your own cheat sheet and fuzz the applications okay before moving on to the next one i will just show you a little demo okay now my call is coming on and i have the ip ready for my broken web application which i access which i can access from my vulnerable from my attacker's machine so kali i always call it as an attacker machine and then the bwa would be my victim machine which i am going to be hitting now let me see if i can access the box the bwa box from here okay new window um so as i said that the proxy that i would be using as a burp suite today and uh, you can use the community version or you can also use uh, the professional version professional version requires a license and it can help you scan um, your applications and uh, same goes with owasp zap it's from owasp and z attack z attack proxy will let you help in fuzzing okay So here it says security shepherd but let me go back to the the main page So here in the broken web application you can see all these applications which are vulnerable these all applications are vulnerable and you can try the xss or uh, sql injection on any of them Now, let me go to the security shepherd I uh-uh. okay it says security serv- proxy server is refusing because my proxy is set here how do you set the proxy i will go back i'll go here go to my preferences and under preferences i have an advanced tab i have an advanced tab uh wait okay Let, let's wait for burp suite to open Now it's open. I'm starting burp. Meanwhile, I'll just bring it down. So I would go to network and settings. I will see what are the settings for the network. Here, what you have to do is you have to set up your proxy manually 
which is your local host or 127.0.0.1. It's a loopback address where you can hear yourself. Anything that goes from your browser will stuck here on the proxy and then only it'll move forward. And uh, you need to set up a port also. I always set up 8080, 8089, all those random ports I set up. And I make sure that I set up the same thing in the proxy as well. I'll show you the proxy settings also. One important thing to note here, when you're setting a proxy, make sure under no proxy for should be clean. If you are setting up something or if you're leaving that with localhost or 127.0.0.1, which means you're saying under the connections that listen to me, but don't listen to me. It's like a contradiction. So this should be blank. This should not be like this. So whenever you set up for the first time, you always will see this thing here or local host here. So you have to remove that. You have to clean it up and then click on OK. Now my port is 8080. Let me go back to my proxy and see what it is in there. So where you can see, you have to go to proxy and mm -hmm. under proxy, you have to go to options. Under option, you will see what are the listeners and that it has to run. If it's not running, delete it and create it again. How you can do it? You can add it. You can add it, the port number to be 8080, and then you can select your own IP or a loopback. Loopback means it will be localhost or 127.0.0.1. As I've already set, up, set it up before, I'm not going to do any further changes here. I will move on to the interceptor. Interceptor will actually let you intercept the request. If it's off, it's not going to be um, blocking the request and will not let you modify. But under the target section, you will be able to see the target tree. Let me clear it off. No, okay. There are this one important thing that I want to tell you. You can actually remove it from the scope. If you remove it from the scope, then this this site would not be showing you here you will not be able to see the traffic from it here if it you will add something to scope then you will you will be able to see the scope uh, you will be able to see the tree structure for that particular host itself let me click on i just cleared it i want to go here now i'll try again and my security shepherd would be on let me go back to my proxy now my proxy is on if you see that that's opening and under that security shepherd is being open. First thing you should do is you should create a username and password, which I've already done. That's my username and something as a password. I'm logged in. Now, once you're logged in, now our main thing is we have to do certain SQL injection challenges, right? That's what we are here for. Like we are actually testing. That's where we have, we have, we have actually come here for the security shepherd a SQL injection challenge or to understand how SQL injection looks like in a vulnerable application. So here are the challenges which you can try yourself or you can try it here, multiple challenges. Let's go to the lessons. Let's go to SQL injection. What does it say? It says, please, uh, it's a SQL injection challenge, but I'll hide the instruction. It says, exploit the SQL injection flaw in the following example to retrieve all the rows in the table. The lesson solution key can be found in these rows. So the, I, we need to find a key. And that key will unlock the lesson. Let's see. It says asking for a username. Username can contain what? Mm, numbers. Alphabets. That can be uppercase, lowercase. Most of the um, companies, I haven't seen that they use the numbers also. But still, you can use numbers. Some banks do use it. Let me try admin. That's the most common one. Do we have it? No, nothing found. Okay, let's see. Maria, did we find something? No, nothing found. Hmm. Let me try administrator. Can we find something with the administrator? Those are the basic uh, usernames, right? Okay, what should we do? Let's see. Okay. Let me try something else. 
Can you tell me what all things we can try? Any idea? User enumeration. That's right. That's what we were trying to do. Now, what I have done is here, um, let me see if I can give you this thing. I have created multiple challenges here, wherein uh, you have some challenge for SQL injection, and you will also have a, a different, uh, there's a tool which I have worked on uh, here. Okay, DVNA. That's also a damn vulnerable web application. Here I have created the challenge that step-by-step -step instruction for you that how you can pen test your website. This is a vulnerable site. I will show you the demo for this also. Now, in injection, uh, you try and do, first of all, you actually try and do, um, try and perform a user enumeration, which we tried, correct? And you couldn't find anything. Now, let's see if my single code can help me with some information. Uh oh, I can see that there is an error. What is detected? It says com.mysql.jdbc exception. So the exception is not being handled properly. And what information I found? It's a SQL server, MySQL server. So can we create some SQL queries for it? Let's go ahead and do it. So now what I did is, I created a username. Now I, I created a statement wherein one or one equal to one. Let's see, can we find something? Oh, we were able to find something. This statement is always true. Now this is completing the statement and then I am trying to put in a username. What I found out that in SQL injection when you create certain queries and Application actually take those queries and handles it. Then this is just the basic information that we were trying to look for a username. Username should not be accepting all the single quotes. It should only be the alphabets or numbers. So I, we've been, um, you might also hear about blacklisting and whitelisting or blacklisting or whitelisting. So blacklisting is when you blacklist certain characters and, uh, uh, and say a yes for everything. And in whitelisting, you say, I want only this and nothing else. I only want alphabets and numbers in this particular statement and nothing else. In this particular input, only these. That's when you can say that your input validation is proper. And only certain statements are allowed and nothing else. Now, if I use this key. Uh oh, sorry. Oh, if I copy this key and put in this challenge, let's say my challenge is complete. See, what I did, I just tried to inf uh, get some information from this particular application. How? I got a lot of information, not just that information. I got the whole list of users, correct? Mm -hmm. Same way, let's go to the XSS challenge. XSS is when I'm trying to print something to a user. The first challenge, cross-site scripting challenge. Now, I have already prepared certain uh, uh, certain sets of uh, scripts. You can see these are the basic, basic scripts that I can inject. We're in alert accesses. Or let's say hacked by cyber talents. Cyber talents. Cyber talents women okay let me see if it works for me it works for me no i didn't copy it properly let me go back let me copy it let me try and put it here okay can i find something no because i put it in the wrong location let me see again here is the search term Mm -mm. It didn't work because not all this, um, the all the uh, scripts that you run on the third party site will work. So you should keep a check, uh, keep a cheat sheet with you. Let me see if this works. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Let me see. So any error that comes in, any error on an on error, it will alert XSS or let's say hacked by Mona. Oh, did we get something? Yes, this is what we wanted. Now, alert document dot cookie. I want the cookie from the site, all the cookie from the browser. Did I get? Mm, let me see. It should run. Okay, did I get the cookie? Yes, I did get the cookie. Now, this is a kind of a, a high severity vulnerability, which now the um, applications are uh, not very much vulnerable of, for it. But there's a talk in the town wherein we should remove this vulnerability from the section. But still, there are a lot of uh, applications which are vulnerable to it. But the severity has gone down drastically. This can impact your application in a big way. You can, you can steal the cookies from the user's browsers. And what you can do? You can actually replicate the section. You can actually replay the session. You can log in as a user. Now, let's say you're logging into your um, Gmail. It only asks you for the credentials for the first time. Now, when you log in again, it just opens up. It just opens up. It does not ask for a username and a password. How does it do it? It's because of the session, session ID, cookie ID, or the session state. It maintains it. It maintains it. Now, are we clear with the SQL injection and cross-site scripting before we move forward? Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the third vulnerability. Now, we have covered uh, SQL injection. We've covered cross-site scripting. Now, I'm going to be moving to a, uh, a different vulnerability, which is broken authentication. Where is it? OK. OK, that says broken authentication and session management or broken authentication. Now, what is an authentication? An authentication is wherein uh, you have a page wherein you are authenticating yourself. You're telling this is what I am. This is who I am. And what all things you can check whether the authentication is proper or not. You can test the password quality. There are applications which can take the six character password which is very easy to brute force. You can create your own uh, password table and can just brute force it. You can create it. Then you can enumerate. You, uh, I think Sarah just said or uh, somebody just said about the uh, enumerating users. You can enumerate the users. And if you're able to find the users, you're good to go. You can do anything. You can try and get the password. You can, uh, you can also test for lockout mechanism. If there's no lockout in an application, you can try n number of passwords and can do anything. Anything means anything. You can take the control of the credentials, can uh, can take over the account, or can take over the web application where all the users are being maintained. Uh, apart from that, you need to maintain the username is unique. There was one, um, one Mimi that was floating around on Twitter where I saw that somebody was trying to reset a password for their uh, username and the password that they sent, the error that comes up saying that the password has been taken up by this user. What does it mean? Now, I have a password which I'm trying to set for my credentials, my username, and that system says that it's already been taken. The password has been taken now by this user. What I can do is I can try and log in with the user and I'm able to log into his accounts. I can do anything. If it's a bank site, I will just transfer money to my account, right? So let's try and replicate uh, broken authentication and session management. Now, I want to show you step by step what I've created first. And that's what I'm going to be replicating in, um, in actually the site. So let me see. Where is my Kali? Here it is. No, it's my BWA. Okay, here it is. I'm going to be going to the session uh, management challenge. It's a broken authentication and session management. I'm going to be going to the fifth challenge. Hmm. 
So it's asking for a username and password. Let me try my username, whether it's there or not. It says username not fine. Let me see. I can try. Okay. Hmm. Still username is not there. Can I try? Norman. No, username not found. What are the general username that we see? Admin and password. Oh, I found something. It says incorrect password for admin, which means you have a user with the name admin. Now what I need to do, I need to just get the password. Let's try and put in some usernames. Admin password with all small letters. No. Admin password. No. Admin password at one to three. It didn't work. Can we try something Would else? Try admin, admin? admin. All right. Would you try admin, admin. Let's try that. Admin, admin. No, it didn't work. Hmm. What can we do? Do we see anything can else here? I can, can see. we try uh, forget password? Yes. You're right. That's what we're going to try now. Let's click on forgot password. Now, the username that we have is admin. So, it's what it's doing is when we click on admin, when we provide the username, it sends an email. So, the thing is, we do not have access to that email. Correct? We only know the username. We don't have access to anything else. Can we do some modification? Yes. But where can we do it? On the proxy. Let's turn on the proxy. Where is my proxy? Here we go. Let's turn on the proxy here and see what we can do. Click on send email. The request goes to the proxy. It says the username, it's the send token. Hmm. Let's see what it says. Can we see something? We can see a token, but then it's not going to help us out. Let me send it to the repeater. I always send the request to the repeater. Repeater is an amazing option. Rather than intercepting the request multiple times, oh, it's best to repeat, use the repeater and see what happens. Now, I'll click on go. I can see the response here. What it says, URL with embedded password reset token has been sent to the admin via email, which I don't have access to. What can I do? Can I do something about it? No. But I have something else. We, we were talking about the code. Let's right click here. Okay, wait. Let me just... Let me just remove the interceptor from here. Let me right click your... Okay, here. View page source. There are multiple good information. You can find it here. There are a lot of scripts which actually give you good information about your application. Let me just minimize it. Uh, here, if you see here, let's go. I can see welcome one day. Okay, that was my proxy, my URL thing. M my security shepherd, but I'll, anything else? I can see some script here. Hmm. Can I just search for password? If I can see some password functionality. No. Can I see something with a login? No. Can I sing with pass? No. It's not searching. Let me see if I can search manually. Mm. Can I find something? Some logic is there. What, what it is? Okay. Okay. It's the key length. It's talking about the key length. It's a CSRF token. Will it help me? Mm -hmm. No. I don't see it. Okay, wait. Mm, let me see. Let me go back and check again. 
Let me refresh the page and see if I can find something. Hmm. Okay, this first time I saw, actually, I went to this file, I was able to see certain token, tokens which I could modify. There were certain JavaScripts which were letting me modify the information. So let me see if I can do something with the email page. Now I can see if I find something new. If there's any change that has happened to the functionality or I can see some few functionality. Hmm, no, nothing I could find out. No, CSR of token, token, word, word. So always make sure you look for certain scripts. Now I'm trying to open certain JavaScripts. JavaScripts will actually help you in uh, researching about the, the scripts that are running on the client side. Okay, on error alert click function, which means it might be vulnerable to XSS also because it's alerting error. Do I have any other JavaScript alongside login? Here's a query. Okay, let me find out. Okay, this is a big query. So what I did is I, I copied certain queries in one of my sheet. I'll show it to you. Mm, okay, here. And broken authentication. Here is my challenge. Okay. What I did, I just I'll just follow you step by step. I tried and searched the username. Then what I did is I actually found the functionality. When I find this is the username and password page. And when I when you try and log in, you will see this. I'll show you this. Okay, wait. admin password if you see here it gives me th this information so can I do something about it let me send to the repeater now I am at the repeater what I found out that uh, on the repeater, when I say this, it says incorrect password, which it's ideally supposed to say that. Then I, I, I try and change the password email. I could only see the username. And the response was this, that user with embedded password reset token has been sent to admin via email, which we just tested. And I was able to see the view page source I saw uh, I showed you. I was actually able to find a JavaScript which had the whole functionality of the password reset. What I could see in the comment section in the reset password form, I could see the this token that uh, what I can modify here. If you see here, it requires three fields, and in the URL, it requires change pass. Can we try and see if we can it if it works? Let me copy it. Let me copy the change pass. Okay. Let me come here. This is the token I have. I'll just add it to the URL. Change pass. Now what else I need? I need a username. I need a username, which I already have it. I need a new password. Control V. Let me just make some changes here and the new password. So the testing might take some of your time, but actually that th th this can give you good information. It says, and the recent password token, which I don't know. I have no idea. Let me see if I can find something. No, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything. Oh, it says could not parse or manipulate 
the date and time of the token. So which means the token has some timestamp. So okay. in the functionality, I could see that the timestamp is basically, that's what I did. And the timestamp in the same JavaScript, I could see that they required this particular timestamp. And how you can get it, this means that Thursday, November, this you can search us very easily on the internet. That uh, what this timestamp is all about. You can search it on the internet and you'll be able to find it. This was on the JavaScript that I bought. So let's try and see. Let's take out the time from your response, the server response. Let's go back. Okay, so this is the inform this is the timestamp that I've got. Let me send it to decoder. The best part about this proxy is that I can decode it as. And the information, decoded information was also there in the JavaScript that I can decode it as base64. I think there was some there. I'll show you. So that you can see that it's a base64. How you, how you can change it? Decode as base64. Encode as base64. So we have to have the encoding here. This is the time, but make sure the token is around the same time. So this is the time that we got. Let's make, let's go back to the time because it has to be just old token. Now let's encode it as base64. I've got this token. Control C. Okay. Let me see. But there's one thing to note here. This is not the time that we were looking for. We were looking for this time. We have to change it to this particular time. Time format, that's when the token would be taken. Mm -mm, sorry. Let me change it. Okay. So it's Thursday, November 29th. November 29th. 2008 is not, 18 is not here. It's going to be in the end. And what else? The time, which is more important. Now I have the time format. Let's see. Encode as, okay, let me try this. Control C. I'm going to be putting it to the repeater and see if so I get some information. Uh oh, the password is too old or none was submitted. Let me, the token is old. Let me, let us change the time. Um, okay, it should be this 44. Do you see that the, it says the change password failed? It should be at least 12 characters, which means I can change my password. It is the new password. I will change it to my password, my new password, one, two, three, four. I'll copy it. Yeah, Falco, See, do you see something? I was able to change the password for admin. Correct? Now, I was able to change the password for admin. And what happened? Now, if you try and replicate login to it, you will be able to log in as an admin and you will see the key. This is about that you need to have proper um, access controls in place and proper session management also. We could find the token very easily from the code and was able to get the password. Authentication was not proper in that. Wow. You could see the whole functionality of your application in just a JavaScript. Can you do that? That how you change your change password? No, it should not be like that. Now moving on to the next one. This is what we discussed. So in insecure management, there are multiple things that you can do. You can check for uh, whether the session is being um, session is being finishing or session is being time out from the server. When you log out from your uh, account, let's say CyberTalent's account or OASP account, whether the password, uh, the, the, there is a lo uh, uh, log out or not. As in you click the back button and see the password is expired or not. Or see whether the session ID, try and log in again and see the session ID changes or not. Every time you log in, the session ID has to be new. 
even before the session, after the session. The session ID has to be changed. I want to actually cover sensitive data exposure, but this very important thing that I wanted to cover, but let's go here first. So what sensitive data exposure here is, basically giving the information which is not required for the world to see, still they can see it. The data which is sensitive for you, for your organization, anybody and everybody can see it. It can be your social security numbers, credit card information, or any XYZ information. Second, and I'll show you. Now I will go to the proxy. Proxy under proxy, you should go to the options. Options which show you that what all what uh, that what the browser is supposed to listen or where exactly you're putting the user uh, this IP and the port number. What the proxy should listen, I should say. So it's going to be listening on port 8080 and what it will listen to loopback address which is 127.0.0.1. You can add it also. Let's say I'll put it in 8089 something. I don't want to click on OK but yes once you click on that it should be running. If it's not running you would not be, your browser you would not be here to hear, you would not be here hearing the browser traffic Uh, let me know once you you are, you are done with it. Should I go go, uh, go and show you the browser information as well? That will help you. Okay, I will go here and go to my browser settings. Open it and advanced settings, settings here. An important thing that if you are not able to see the same preferences, I can go back to my system and show you. Now, if I go back, I'll open my Firefox. It's opening. I have to click here. Click on preferences. Under preferences, you just don't have to search for options. Just search for proxy. You will see network proxy. Click on settings and manual settings. And if you see here, I don't have anything here. It's blank. But my, I, my port is 8080. Oh, I, I generally prefer using net, uh, this uh, Firefox for testing. You can use any other browser also. Uh, there is one uh, from OWASP as well. So you, Mantra, that's called Mantra, OWASP Mantra. You can use that. That has got certain extensions, but uh, you can use any of that. But Firefox is best for testing or Mantra. I'm just going to be staying here for a couple of seconds and then I move forward. Please let me know uh, if you have any further questions around the same. Why should uh, we do uh, proxy configuration uh, for the first time? So uh, why should we do it? Yes. So it's, it, it will help you in intercepting the traffic. And if you're not uh, and it will also let you scrub through the pages. If you want to do, uh, if you want to understand the application also, it will show you the whole tree structure. If you see under security shepherd, there are multiple pages. The way I said that when we go to cyber talents page or OWASP.org, there are multiple pages involved in it. It will let you spider everything. You're just scrubbing through the application. You're trying to understand the attack surface or the trying to understand the application itself. So you can actually map it. That's called mapping the application. Because with, without understanding the application, if you start pen testing, you will actually you will actually not be able to pen test it properly, or it might take you longer time than required. So it has certain JavaScripts. It's a Java-based application. That's why it's a JavaScript. It's a 
JSP page, if you see right. login page is also a JSP. You can see if you can find some information from the response. If you see, I can find certain sensitive information here. It's a security misconfiguration also, but I can see some sensor information. That's why I always suggest that when you're starting your pen testing, always just turn on proxy. Do not intercept it. Just let it go through proxy. You will have the whole tree structure. You can remove everything else from here. Or you can uh, remove it from your uh, scope. So if you remove it from the scope, they will not come back to you. Like you will not be able to see them again here. Mm, I will just delete selected items. Oh, sorry. Delete selected items. Now I can see the tree structure for only my security shepherd or only the application that I am pen testing. I can see multiple pages involved in it. That's why I always set up the, the proxy. And it's always advisable when you're pen testing because not all applications have uh, the client. Okay, um, I'll give you an example. There are validations. When we validate anything, there are two kinds of validation. One is client-side validation. One is server-side validation. And if you don't have client-side validation, it's easy to do anything. But if you have client-side validations in place, let's say password policy, you have client-side properly tested. But server side is not there. How will you test it? You need something in the middle to test it. What would you do? You will let the proxy on and then you can intercept it and do your pen test and you can test whether the server is accepting uh, whatever you want to modify it or not. Uh, there was one of uh, example that I uh, actually it's a live thing wherein one person actually wanted to book some movie tickets, which he really liked, but the price was super high. And he wanted to buy, pay the least amount that he had in a pocket. So he said, can I do something? Can I change something in the middle? Can I tamper the parameters? Can I tamper the amount? Okay, let's see. He modified, he, he intercept, he turned on the proxy, modified the amount to just one rupee and he was able to book the ticket. When the receipt came and our, the, the, the website asked to pay, it was done by, just one rupee. So there was a client side validation, but not the server side. So all those client side server side things you can see it over here. Actually, it'll let you see what's going on from the client side. I created my own username and password. All those things I can see it here. All the JSP files. So it's just for you to understand the space. Some JavaScript might give you the whole information which which can give you the functionality the way I just said there was one functionality which was just letting me see the pass right I can go through them it does it have a password okay what else 20 matches can I go back to any of them if you see here there are a lot of them forgot password functionality do you see it here Do you see the reset password form, which I was showing you in the JavaScript? This is the same reset password form. And the whole functionality is listed over here. And this is a change password. How do you change the password? The URL should have a change pass with, along with the token, username, new password, and the reset password token. Right? So I did not know yeah. anything, but I just got the information from here. And... Also, uh, now people don't do it, but in early days, what when the application security was booming, people used to hard code the credentials. You, I could actually, when I started off, I could see the database passwords on also in the view source page. Who saves the password like that? Who sends the database passwords to the client side? Nobody. Who saves the password in JavaScript just to get the access? Nobody. And it should not be, it's not never a best practice. In the comments, a lot of people save the passwords. This is the whole functionality I could see, right? So it this proxy will actually let you understand uh, that if there is any sensitive information that you can find it. Uh, was I able to answer your question? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. 
and if you still have any doubts feel free to reach out to me anytime i'm there available on twitter i'm available on linkedin feel free to reach out and um, mohtaz also has uh, inf uh, my information you can reach out to him also and uh, i am always available my response might be little delayed sometimes but i'm available to answer any of your questions and any help thank you thank you you're welcome uh Okay, I just like, uh, excuse me, I just like to ask, is this uh, session is recorded? Yes, the session is recorded. Okay, thanks, because I lost a little bit in the start. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, no problem. I okay. recorded the session. We will be sharing the recorded session with the uh, the Cyber Talents team and probably Mohataj would be able to give you the recording. Thanks a lot. You're most welcome. I would like to ask you. Sorry, Zandra, I just would like to ask you, what is the mantra? What uh, mantra? Sorry, I lost uh, the last part, please. Can you please repeat, please? Uh, what is the last mantra you speak about? Oh, okay. I'll show you now itself. A last mantra is a browser. It's again, I think, uh, uh, merged with uh, bra uh, this uh, Firefox and with a lot of extensions. I don't have it on my this system, but there is one system that I use for pen testing. I have I use it. OWASP Mantra. Here it is. It's a security framework which you can use it, which you can download it from the internet and uh, get Mantra OWASP. It's it's a very amazing uh, a sec uh, security testing framework. Uh, Uh, do you want the URL? I can share it in the link also. Let me just okay. bring you here. Where is the chat? Here. I don't see chat. How come? It should be here. No, all. No, cancel. Let me see where is the chat option. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one place where I could see. So just put it in the chat and even the other links, I can put it in the chat so that it will help you. So these are the basic frameworks. When you're starting in web application security, um, you can actually look for application security verification standard and application security guide. Uh, there are multiple other resources on the internet which you can take help from, but you need a point wherein you can start off yourself. If you see here, this is a cheat sheet. So this is the SQL injection cheat sheet. Um, then they have you have a XXE cheat sheet. Type wrong. Okay, you have XXE cheat sheet. There are multiple cheat sheets. Then you have by OWASP also. which I'll just put it in. Uh, so XXE is, uh, it's another kind of an injection, which I read it on the Twitter that people said that uh, uh, it's another kind of injection, wherein the application takes XML input, parses it, and then provide you the information that you want. So it takes the third party XML information. So if a malicious hacker puts in something uh, external, you, you will be able to replicate it. Uh, I should send you the cross-site scripting cheat sheet also. Okay, here you go. All these things will help you. There are multiple other cheat sheets which you can use. Um, apart from that, there are multiple other vulnerabilities which are there. 
so the, you, when you are learning about a vulnerability make sure you understand the prevention also or you understand how you remediate all those findings you have xxc which i was just saying that you can actually try and fetch multiple even this uh, super critical information also you can figure it out from xml parsers broken access control we have talked about that uh, wherein you have weak passwords it, it's brute forceable also i'll tell you something a uh, very important thing that what happened is uh, we were working on one of the sites we were just testing it uh, and uh, there were multiple roles you always create you create an admin role you create a user role and you create a manager role right different kind of roles you create so uh, when we created the site the only uh, thing that was there uh, uh the only thing that is there is uh, the you create you create access in such a way that one user role cannot access the other information if you are able to access the other information that means the whole point in getting the uh, uh getting the roles is just deficient so you need to make sure that you, when you are setting up the roles and assigning proper policies the those policies should not be going in the response or it should not be going in the request or not coming in the response from the server uh, we were testing one of the applications and we could actually modify a normal user to the super most super user account which was a very critical thing so you have to make sure that when you're testing all those things are not there and security misconfiguration which can give you hell lot of information you you can actually uh, Uh, you can actually modify certain information on the server by using just the security misconfiguration uh the big the big example that lot of uh, attacks that have happened in the past that you might be able to see that the s3 bucket from aws from one of the clouds was visible because they forgot to the the company was f- forgot to uh, close it make it private right on the cloud everything is visible on the internet so the configuration on owners lies on the owner also who owns the the bucket now same way there are a lot of hacks happened in the past on um, verizon which which actually uh, gave them a big hit but again they came back and secured their application like anything they have a good security team which is working hard very hard on that same goes with every company every company make sure that their applications are secure and they try hard to just secure it so just be very very attentive about security misconfiguration here i'm trying to give you the high level overview because now we are running short of time so i want to make sure that i cover the most of it and you can go back and look for it now uh, one important thing which i always cover is using components with known vulnerabilities what what it is what using one vulnerab- using uh, components with known vulnerabilities is all about when and you know that you are using certain components which might be vulnerable uh, example um, you might have heard about or if not then i'll tell you that it's a equifax hack which has happened because of apache being vulnerable apache released the patch long back but then equifax just missed somehow missed because sometimes you just t- tend to miss certain patches because there are a lot of patches coming in every other day so they missed the patch and Uh, some hacker got to know that they, they are running a patch in this version they try and exploit and the exploit was done boom the application was hacked the lot of information was there on the internet so make sure when you are using third party components third party libraries you always validate them there are a lot of tools in the market there are a lot of technologies in the market which can help you find it out but what you can do is you can also the best practice is create your own enterprise library which can help you see what are the components that you're using in an application what are the third party components you're using uh yes this is the thing that i really love the most insecure uh this is in such logging and monitoring wherein now you have everything but you don't have the incident response or logging proper logging and monitoring this and this example says it that people want people really go for uh, the loo breaks or the they they go lot for the coffee breaks so they wanted to save time they actually fixed the process how they taking water from the loo or uh, from the commode is it a good process no when you streamline the process you should know 
who which all people i have to sit in you are you have a tool but you don't have the right set of skills in the company then you're gone there are a lot of breaches which are happening because of the because of not finding the right set of um, skill set not, not finding the incidents not finding the hacker which is trying to stay in your organization if you know uh, if, i just talked about one of the recent cases marriott just got hacked yesterday the the release that yes we were hacked confirmed that's one hack right it's on the internet marriott and starwood now what happened was the the hacker was there since 2014 that's what the mm. report says hacker news and the other site says so what happened that they did not they were not able to recognize it that there is some malicious in the uh, in the system right? so make sure that you log in and monitor properly all the resources i've already shared i will actually share all these resources Sorry, also i'm having trouble with the connection okay now i will share all these details over also the chat and uh, you can actually go back and practice other challenges also there are amazing other challenges which are there uh, on the tool uh, on this particular vulnerable web application starting xxc and what not let me go back here all the challenges are there information leak insecure direct object reference mobile broken crypto i just wanted to make sure that i give you certain background of what you can do and the same all these challenges you can you would see uh, in uh, the cdf so what mohtas told me that there are certain open cdf challenges also which is which are available for the whole internet you can try those also and there are challenges here also let me chat and put some information here now all these things will give you some background also so uh now we uh i am done with the presentation and uh, the information that i wanted to share because it's just a small session for two hours we couldn't cover, cover the whole hands on thing but there are challenges which i've created for the hands on full day training that we give at different conferences those trainings are free of cost for any women to attend uh if you feel that uh, you want to attend or if you want certain any information from me feel free to reach out to me i'll share my details again with you so that's me i'll ping it on the chat here where you can reach out to me any questions any questions that you have before we close off the session can we have the link is for free challenge that you have created you want it yeah let me please. see if i can do it let me see if i can paste somewhere okay i think i can do it i can do it i can mail you okay thank you i, I appreciate it let me see even on the discord channel like it okay i'll mail you I'll I'll mail uh, Mohtaj and he can send it further with all of you. Okay. Thank you. You're most welcome. Bye -bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.